Yo, what's up guys, and welcome back to the Football Appreciation YouTube channel. Now, after all the craziness in Group F and in the Euros, I uh, just finished watching that, and I hop on Twitter and Lucien Favre looks like he's pretty much set to join Crystal Palace. And what I think is an actually really underrated and good move for Crystal Palace, you know, it kind of felt like Frank Lampard was going to get the job, but then, then Nuno, my boy Nuno, looked like he was going to get it. Um, and I thought that was a really good appointment for Palace, but then, you know, I cursed it and it, it fell through. And now it looks like uh, forward Dortmund boss Lucien Favre is going to get the job. Now, I think this is a great appointment, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but I think Palace are in safe hands here. You know, this this is a harder job than I think people give are giving Favre credit for, for taking this. You know, obviously Palace finished 14th in the Premier League last season, pretty comfortable mid-table finish. But, you know, if you look at that unexpected points, they were the fourth worst team in the Premier League. Uh, sorry, this was the season before last season. They were the fourth worst, which is kind of mental when you think about it. And then last season, again, they finished uh, 14th again. And if you look at expected points, again, they, they should have been relegated on expected points. They were the third worst side in the Premier League. And it kind of feels like Palace, with the, with the age of their squad and the contract situation, they're kind of on a steady decline. And game, I, I was surprised they didn't get rid of Roy Hodgson a year ago, to be honest. But he's kept them up again. And this is a big job for Favre, you know. Look, this, this Palace squad isn't bad. This was Palace's most squat, most used squad last season. And I'm not saying this is their, their strongest starting eleven by any means. You know, I think Tariq Mitchell would 100% be in there over Patrick Van Arnold, for example. But this is a massive job for Crystal Palace and for Favre and for Steve Parrish. And this is an ageing squad. I think when you look at this squad, really look at Zaha, Eze and Tariq Mitchell and think apart from that, it's kind of... It's very dull and obviously I think everyone knows about Palace's contract situation and not many of these players I'd really want to keep. Um, I think Jeffrey Schlupp's a, a useful player as is Andros Townsend but no one else here really and Gary Cahill you'd probably keep but apart from that there's a lot of deadwood there. However you can look at it the other way and say this is a lot of wages. You know Palace, are, I think Palace had the ninth highest wage bill last season and a lot of that's gone now and now moving on to the Lucien Favre era. This is a very safe pair of hands, a guy that's pretty much done a good job wherever he's been. You know, I'll talk about Dortmund in a minute. But, you know, Gladbach, he did a great job at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Nice, very solid job, brought through Alassane play and a lot of good players. And he got that Dortmund job, and I think he's done a pretty good job. You know, last season, you know, he switched between a back three and a back four, but it was mainly this 4-2-3-1 of Be Bellingham as the box-to-box -box guy, Delaney is more the DM, kind of high fullbacks. And then two wide men, and obviously Haaland and Royce doing their thing. And I don't think Lucien Favre did an incredible job at Dortmund by any means. Um, he's, I'm not saying he did a bad job, by the way. I mean, he just did a very solid job. He got the second best probably squad in, Dort in, in the Bundesliga finishing second. I don't think there's any anything else you can really ask for him. You know, in his first season, he only got one less win than Bayern Munich. Missed out on the, on the, um, on the Bundesliga by two points. They did get a bit lucky, you know, unexpected points they were way behind Bayern. They're actually the fourth best team based on expected points. But, you know, ultimately they finished second. That's a good first season for Favre. Uh, second season, again, second place, 21 wins. It's pretty solid, you know, fourth best defence in Germany. You know, expected goals put them third again. You know, Le Leipzig did outperform Dortmund a little bit, but generally a pretty solid campaign again for Favre. And then this season, again, you know, finished third this season, bit of a drop off. But Dortmund had a, have had a lot of injuries. Plus, did do really well in the Champions League, and you know, based on expected points, again, third best team. So, to me, what this says to me about Lucien Favre brought through a lot of young players, a, a good transition manager, and just gets the best out of what he's got. Now, obviously, Dortmund is the biggest club he's been at, and Palace is a, you know, it's a, it's a step down in terms of um, quality, right? And if if you kind of match. Favre's Dortmund team on this Palace side. I, you know, Ben Teke had a great season. And I really rate Tarek Mitchell. And Gary Cahill is useful. But I don't... I look at this Palace squad and think, probably need two new midfielders. Probably needed another wide player. I think Joel Ward's on the decline. You probably need another centre-back. And Gaeta even had a bad down season, but I trust him to have a good year. But this Palace side feels like it's really in transition. And it's for, I think they've got it right. I think this is a first good. This is a first good step by Steve Parrish. He's an experienced pair of hands. Um, he's pretty much done a good job wherever he's been, and I was surprised. I think this is a real coup for Palace. Genuinely, I do. Um, 
It wouldn't have surprised me if he got the Tottenham job. It wouldn't have surprised me if he got the Everton job. You know, I think I think he's a better manager than, than someone like Rafa Benitez, or even as much as I, as much as I love my boy Nuno, I think he is a better manager. He's a more proven manager, and I still think Palace are in decline. It does worry me. Um, you know, the fact that they should have got relegated last season is concerning based on expected points. Again, I know expected points isn't perfect, but I think it just makes the point. This is such a big job for Favre. But you know, if you're if you're a Palace fan, you're in good hands now, and. It's on the board in the recruitment side because there's going to be a lot of wages off now. That squad's paper thin. Off the top of my head, I don't think Palace has signed anyone yet. But one good thing about Favre as well, you know, he's been all over the place. He's an experienced guy. He knows a lot of people. That's good for Palace. You have connections. Having a guy that's got connections and, by the way, he's well, really well liked at pretty much every club he's been at. That's that's never a bad thing for recruitment. And I think. If I was a Palace fan, assuming the board get things right, assuming Eze comes back from his injury at a good time and Tarrant Mitchell develops in the way I, I expect him to, I think Palace are in pretty safe hands and this is a solid appointment and Palace will kind of just continue to be a mid-table Premier League club. Um, and given the ownership situation and the amount of money Palace have, I think that's a pretty fair enough job and something Favre would do pretty well. Um, but yeah, if you're a Palace fan, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, you're happy with this? I think you should be. I think this is an amazing appointment. Um, subscribe to the channel, because why not? Um, and yeah, subscribe, like the video, and peace.